So in this video, what we'll be doing is displaying our results and we'll be using PHP's prepared statements to secure our web search engine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here and you can see this is our search query where construct. We can actually leave this alone, but we need to change this to prepare. We'll leave that for the minute actually, because before we do that, we need to add our terms from an array. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna create another array called params. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to first insert the terms into our array. So the way we do that is we say params. It's an associative array. So we uh, pass it a string for the key, uh, the value that we use to retrieve the information from the array. And we say it's equal to search. And then we pass it the value x. Then we say that is equal to term. This means every time the for each loop loops, it will create a new item in the params array equal to search1, search2, search3, etc. And each time it does that, it will insert the term into the array and then we're going to use that. And then we're going to pass this array to our execute function to uh, fit in all the parameters that we're missing. So what we're going to do, uh, since if we try to say search, actually we need to put in a code on here, you can see this is a string and MySQL will treat it as such. So what we need to do is we need to use MySQL's built-in function called concat. So we say concat to concatenate strings together. So we pass it uh, the strings we want to concatenate. And in between them we pass it another string. And this string is search. And then we pass it the number x. So if we go back to the crawler, when we used prepared statements, you can see we uh, said colon title is equal to title and the colon title was stored in an associative array and that associative array stored our parameters. So here we're doing pretty much exactly the same thing. So I'm just going to copy this. And we're just going to keep pasting it in here. So here what we're going to do is we're going to run this and hopefully it'll work. Before we can run it, we need to change this from query to prepare. Then we need to say results equals results execute. And finally, we need to pass execute our params array. So let's run this again. So the reason we're getting this row count error is because if we go back to our text editor, you can see here we're executing the query, but what, we're, but what we're doing incorrectly is we're assigning the output of our execute function to the variable results. The reason this is giving us the error is because whenever you execute a query using the execute method, it returns one if the query executes successfully, and it returns zero if it fails. And because we can change the type of a variable in PHP at runtime, what we're doing essentially is, is changing the type of the results variable from an object to a literal integer that's a 1 or a 0. So because of that, we're, what we're essentially trying to do is access the row count method on just a random integer. So what we need to do is just delete that so we're not storing the output of this execute function. We can store it, but if we store it in the results variable, which is the variable we're trying to access the row count from, we'll get an error. So we just delete that. We're not storing the output of this method anymore, it's just going to return a 1. And then what we can do is we can use results to access the row kind, and we can use results to access all of the rows that are returned. So if I just save this, and we run this again, you can see we get 54 results returned. And we're using prepared statements as opposed to just using regular SQL queries uh, that we were using in the last video. So before I go, the last thing I want to do is I want to just go down here. Instead of print r, fetch all, uh, and just printing out this array because it looks uh, terrible, we're going to just output the results properly. So we're going to say for each results fetch all as result. And we're just going to comment this out at the bottom. Essentially what's happening is fetch all returns an array of arrays and each array is going to be referred to as result. So if we look up here, this is the first array, this is the second array, and each one of these arrays is going to be referred to as result within our for each loop. Then what we can do is we can do something like echo 
result. And because these are associative arrays, we can actually just say something like result title. And if we go back to the page, you can see these are the keys here. Instead of using numbers, you can use both. You can use either the string or the number, where you can just use the string. So we can say result title to access the title out of this array. So if we just refresh, whoops, it's actually result title like this, because we're accessing an array, not an object. So let's just try this again. And you can see here is all of the titles that have just been printed out. But what we want to do is just append a new line onto the end of each one. So we set append a break tag and we'll uncomment the pre tag. And we run this again. And you can see here are the titles of all of the pages. The next thing we want to do is print out the description. So we'll say echo uh, result description. And finally echo whoops, echo result URL. So here we have the title, the description, the URL, and then title, description, URL, and it goes all the way down. And we're just gonna put in a horizontal row, which is a HR tag. And sometimes we're gonna get results that don't have a description. Not on this page, but there will be some on other pages. So if I just delete our search query, you can see we get 1400 results. That's every result in the database. And you can see here for these Quora um, pages, there are no descriptions. So what we can do is we can say, if result description is equal to nothing, then we will just echo out no description available. with a break tag at the end, and then otherwise we'll say else. We'll just print out the actual description. So let's refresh again. And you can see now it says no description available for the links where there's no description. For the other links where there is a description, uh, like this one up here, you can see we have the actual description printed out. So that's it for this short search engine series. We're going to be doing a more complicated search engine series that involves actually searching the text within a web page and things like that uh, in a future series. But that's it for this one. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next series.